Hi, I'm Jeff Davis, and this is a BigQuery Concepts video brought to you by ROI Training. Today we're going to look at how you can take a standard normalized data set and generate tables using alternative schema that will improve your query performance. And you can do this entirely within BigQuery without using any external ETL tools. Let's move over to the demo environment and see how it works. So we're going to start with a data set. And you can see there's a customer table. And customers generate orders. Orders have line items. Line items have products. But what we want to do is we want to take these four tables and generate a single denormalized table, which will give us much faster query performance. So we can do that using this query, which I'm going to run in the background while I explain it. So this is a DDL query, and it's going to create a new table in the new schema data set called DNORM. And all we're going to do is take the customer table, we're going to join it to the order table, we're going to take the result of that and join it to the line item table, and the result of that and join it to the product table. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the results and we're going to project the uh, columns for the customer data, a couple columns from the orders table, a couple columns from the line items table, and the product detail columns as well. So our query completed in about 31 seconds. And if we look down here, we should see that there is a denorm table that has been generated. And if we look at the denorm table, you can see that it has all of the customer order line item and product data in one table rather than in four separate tables. If you look, you can see that there are 10 million and one rows. This is one row for every customer order line item combination. And if we look at the preview, you can see that for any given customer, you've got lots and lots of rows. You have effectively one row for every line item for every order. Okay. Now, this is going to give you 80 to 90% performance improvement on your queries, but it's not the fastest possible schema. As it turns out, you know that actually doing a nested repeated table will actually be faster and cost you less money by storing less data on disk. So to generate a table with a nested repeated data structure, you would use a query that looks like so. I'm going to go ahead and run it while we explain it. So you can see that once again, we're doing a DDL statement. So we're creating or replacing a table called nested. And we're going to start, as we did before, by joining the customer table to the order table. However, we're going to take that and join it to another temporary table that's generated by this subquery. What the subquery is doing is it is joining the line item table to the product table, and then it's grouping by order number. So if there are 10 rows with 10 line items for one order, this is going to group the 10 rows. And so there will be one output row. That output row will have the order number. And then it's going to have a second column called line item array. And this is going to be an array of structs. So we're using the struct function to generate a struct, which has got the line item columns and the product columns for each line item. And then we're doing the array aggregation function to take the 10 line item rows for a given order and put them into an array of structs. So basically 10 line items go in or 10 line item rows go in. One row comes out with an order number and a 10 element array. Okay. So when we're done, we should have a nested table here. If we take a look at the nested table, we should see that if we look at the schema, that there is a line item array column, and it is a repeated column of type record. Repeated in BigQuery means array. Record in BigQuery means struct. So this is an array of structs. Okay, And you'll notice there's only 1 million in one rows. That's because there were 10 million, but that was one row per line item. Now there's 1 million. That's one row per order. So this will give you 90 to 95% performance increase in your queries, but you want to take it a step further. What you want to do is you want to take a nested repeated table and partition it. So we're going to go ahead and run this query. This is going to work very much the way that the last one did. In fact, this portion of it is exactly the same. Right? We're still joining the customer table to the order table. We're still generating this uh, set of rows 
which joins the line item and the products table, but then aggregates on order number and generates an array of structs. All we've done actually is add one small clause here. We've said we want to partition by the order date. So this is going to end up doing day partitioning by the order date column. This is going to take a little bit longer to run. So while it continues running, we're going to look at our last option, which is actually generating a nested repeated table that is partitioned by date and clustered by customer zip code. And this query is going to look very much like the previous query. So this part is exactly the same. This is generating the nested repeated table. But here we have our partition by clause, which does the date partitioning. And then here we have a cluster by clause, which will generate a clustered table clustered by zip code. If we go back to the previous query, this should be done now. Okay, this took 57.8 seconds. And if we look, there is a newly generated nested partition table. You can see that it's uh, newly generated because this is the current time. It overwrote the previous incarnation of this table. And you can see in the metadata for the table that in fact it is partitioned. And it's partitioned by the order date column and it's doing day partitioning. If we go and we look at the last tab, this should just be finishing up shortly. And what we're going to see is a newly generated nested partition clustered table which will look just like the previous table, except with clustering information. All right, so if we click here, we should see if we hide the editor. If we look at the details, you can see that this was just generated now. You can see that it is also partitioned by the order date column, but it's also clustered by the zip code. So we've shown you how to easily take a normalized data set that you export from your online transaction processing database and load directly into BigQuery as is, and then use DDL queries to actually generate derived tables that have optimized schema that will improve your price performance uh, characteristics in BigQuery. If you found this video useful, please go ahead and like the video and share it with your friends. If you'd like to see other videos produced by ROI Training, go ahead and check out our YouTube channel. And if you want to be notified of future videos that ROI creates, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much.